1,600 plus regular season games played from the first weekend of September up to the now past Valentine's Day weekend. And finally, the time has come to thin the pool from 162 teams to the top 40. Welcome to the American Collegiate Hockey Association's Division Three Regional Reveal Show. Hosted by the Chippewa Club Hockey Network from Central Michigan University School of Broadcast and Cinematic Arts and Spa Digital Studio. I'm ACHA D3 Chief of Broadcasting Sean Bednard and alongside me Lou Gamlin, host of the ACHA Power Play. One month from today, we will be one day past the national pool play. Eight teams will have already earned themselves a win and their tickets have already been punched for the regional tournament heading to nationals. That's a one-way ticket to Columbus, Ohio. The other 32 teams have to battle for those final spots as we'll see who will fill those final eight spots down in Columbus. start off from the region that always has people's interest, the ACHA North. Eight of the last nine national championships, losing three teams that competed at nationals last year. Let's take a look at the teams to start off who will be competing in the regional tournament. Lou, who are we looking at for that six versus seven? Well, right now we're going to be looking at uh, Indiana taking on Michigan. But Indiana plays in the ICHC and, of course, Michigan playing in that MCHC. Michigan coming off a couple of very impressive wins over the weekend against Central Michigan, so they're kind of on a roll. Uh, it, it, that's I, that's going to be a very interesting matchup. At six for seven, that's one of the ones you usually know a little bit more of who's going to be there. Five ver versus eight, you get a little bit more of the fringe. Who's filling in those spots for you? Grand Valley State is taking on in, uh, Adrian College. Adrian College, of course, last year they had two teams. This year, uh, Adrian Black, as they were last year, it's just one D3 team. Grand Valley State, they've got a great record. They've uh, been up and down a little bit the second half of the season, but uh, that's going to be a strong matchup for Grand Valley as they take on Adrian. You're looking at the last two in, last two out. Always a bit of intrigue here. Four versus nine. Well, four versus nine, we've got Oakland against Indiana Tech. Uh, they haven't played each other this year. Oakland, as we know, they started out kind of slow this year uh, through attrition and some injury. They got some players back the second half of the year. They've really played well. And Indiana Tech, they're new to the uh, regional tournament this year, but they also have played in the MCHC. They've played the likes of Grand Valley. They've played the likes of Hope College. So uh, they're battle tested. I think this is gonna be a very intriguing matchup. And finally, we look at the final regional rankings. Three versus 10, the last one out and the last one in. A Little bit of intrigue here, who are we looking at? We've got Hope College at number three, taking on uh, Ferris State at number 10. Again, these two teams have not played each other. Ferris, this is their first shot into the regionals. Uh, Hope, they're a perennial national power. They didn't make it last year, but I'll tell you what, Sean, I think that they are the team to watch really in this region because they have something to prove after last year's. I don't know if it was a stunning loss in double overtime, but it was a heartbreaker and they know that they were better than that. And I think they've got a lot on their mind that they really want to make a prove a point to get to nationals. And you take a look at that Ferris State team, they're a team that was formerly a D2 powerhouse, joining the ranks of D3 now. You see, this is kind of a, a rebuilding of getting that Ferris State ACHA program back to contention. You talk about uh, that Hope College team, a team that has made it to regionals the last two years and made it, made it close to the regional finals, but the last two years just not being able to advance that next step. And you got great goaltender play in Austin Kane, mm -hmm. great goal scorers like Garrett Gormley. We're excited to see what this region is going to look like who do we got for the auto bids, the one and two? Well, the auto bids, really no surprise if you've been following it uh, throughout the year. It's uh, Michigan State at number one and Central Michigan at number two. Uh, they've been on top, as I mentioned, most of the year. Central 30 wins this year, a great comeback season, if you will. Uh, last year, just barely out of the uh, regional tournament. And then, of course, uh, Michigan State, Last year played a very thrilling overtime game against Grand Valley. They're strong, Coach Don Headley's team really firing on all cylinders right now, including a big weekend sweep not too long ago against Oakland. Um, very well deserved for the top two spots. You see that asterisk next to Ferris State's name. Sioux College was the number six team when the, the final rankings came out. 
as a first year program, not eligible for nationals, but if they keep things up as an MCHC team next year, they could find themselves in a, in a better position. A lot of interesting matchups in this first round of regionals. What, what matchup has the most intrigue? What do you think is going to be the most crucial? Well, this? you know, what I'm interested to see really is the Michigan-Indiana um, matchup as far as uh, Michigan, you know, they've got a lot to prove after last year as well. They were, um, you know, they got beat pretty handily by Adrian and they felt like that they, they were a better team than that. In Indiana, they always feel like they're slighted maybe a little bit because they're, they don't get the pub or the, the, you know, the credit they deserve playing in the Indiana, the Indiana Collegiate Hockey Conference. So that's an intriguing matchup. But the other one that I'm looking at again, Sean, is Hope against Ferris. Ferris is kind of an unknown. Hope, like I said, they feel like they've got a lot to prove after last year's loss. And uh, that, that to me is, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. It's going to be interesting to see exactly how these teams perform. And we talk about the ACHA North, always one of the top regions in all of the ACHA, and especially the last couple of years. Anyone in this, this region could really make some noise. Who do you think is going to be a real sleeper pick? Well, if I'm going with a sleeper, I, I'll tell you, it's going to have to be probably, uh, I'm, going to go, I'm going to go with uh, Indiana Tech, just because of, of an unknown. They have played Oakland before, but you know, they've got some very good goaltending down there. And as we all know, goaltending is key, in, in especially in tournament play. That's my sleeper pick right there, Indiana Tech. So you got Indiana Tech, and we talk about the teams that are the important matchups. Who do you think is moving on to the national tournament? Which of these two teams from the regional tournament of this ACHA North find their way to that next level? Well, in my opinion, it's probably going to be Hope College. And, you know, that second day, if everything goes to chalk, it's going to be Grand Valley and Oakland. And I, I'm going with Oakland. I think they're playing better as of late, so I'm going with Oakland. One region down, three more to look at. We'll step aside momentarily and be right back here on the ACHA D3 Regional Reveal Show. MHTV's Inside Chippewa Hockey airs every other Monday at 6 p.m. on Charter 189. This semester, MHTV presents Nobody Watches Season 3, a show with questionable quality and, uh, more stuff. Nobody Watches Season 3. Airing Mondays at 1 and 8 p.m. Greeting you with new episodes every other week. MHTV is a service of Central Michigan University's School of Broadcast and Cinematic Arts. Welcome back to the ACHA D3 Regional Reveal Show. Lou Gamlin alongside me, I'm Sean Bednard. We head south of the border now, where things are really heating up down around the Florida region. The South Regional's coming up, the only region to have all four teams remaining here in the playoffs coming up from last year's tournament, either in the regional or national tournament. We start off by looking at the regional tournament down in Wesley Chapel, Florida. The six versus seven matchup at 5.15 p.m. on the 23rd. Florida versus Wilmington. Florida, a sweetheart story, a team that was kind of on the outside, more on the way outside in last year's regionals, more to 15 seed, going against a Wilmington team that has a lot to prove this year as well. 
This is an intriguing matchup that certainly is gonna have a lot to prove as we look at five versus eight. This is one that I really wanna keep an eye on. South Florida versus Georgia Tech, a battle of strong goaltender play. Georgia Tech has played some tough teams and personally I believe that they've showed off pretty well. Georgia Tech had a hot finish to the season, eight and two in their final 10, a 4-3 loss in the final game against Kennesaw State. There's gonna be a lot of intrigue in this game against a South Florida team that I think is really good this year. I had doubts about them last year, but I think they're proving themselves this season. We head over to four versus nine. I'm putting it out there right now. Upset alert down in Florida. Central Florida taking on Tampa. Five times these two teams have met already this season. Four times Tampa's came up with a win with one tie between these two teams. Watch out there, because nine versus four, that one's gonna have a lot to prove between those two teams and could have huge implications heading into the national tournament. We look at three versus 10. Last one in, last one out. Out of nowhere, Florida Atlantic comes in from 12 and takes the 10 spot, moving up from being a 14 seed earlier on in the rankings as they take on a very good Kennesaw State team that had a split with Georgia earlier on in the year, a 9-3 win and a 7-4 loss. Florida Atlantic has showed up against some tough teams, a very deep sleeper, starting one and seven, finishing off eight and six, two and 13 versus top 10 teams, but those are incredibly tough teams. We take a look now at the number one and two team in this region, and you start off with Florida Gulf Coast. They were number one in the South all year long, outstanding record, playing great teams and played outstanding against those teams. They take the number one seed and Georgia taking in number two. That's a lot of fun between those two teams. We'll take a look at the top 10 now as it sits in its finality, starting off with Florida Gulf Coast and working down the line with Georgia. We take a look at the South rankings, one through 10 now. It's dominated by the Florida teams as we're used to seeing here. It's, it's like Michigan in the North, Florida is the South. And right now you see Florida Gulf Coast and University of Georgia getting those top two buys. This South is looking very exciting heading in. We always know what kind of potential they can have. And with how strong this region has been the last few years, I think that this is really the region that if anyone's gonna dethrone the North, the South is gonna be the region to do it. Well, Sean, and as you all know, in the last couple of years, this is usually the closest region as far as the rankings and coming right down to the wire as far as positioning goes. I agree with you from top to bottom, this is a very solid region. Watch out for Florida Atlantic. I know they've, you know, their record may not show it, but they've got some strong goaltending. I would match them up goaltending wise right up there with uh, South Florida. Their, you know, their defensive style of hockey, I think is gonna give some fits in the regionals. So, you know, if I were to pick a sleeper, that would be my pick, but from top to bottom, a very solid region. South Florida, our preseason number five, a team that really could make some noise, and that's why I'm taking them as my, not sleeper, but that key matchup. Them versus Georgia Tech is gonna have a lot of interest. Quality wins all across the board for Georgia Tech. They down number three, Kennesaw, in their only meeting, 4-3. Overcame a number four, Quinnipiac, on the road, 5-4. And a close loss to Farmingdale State, 7-4. They won the series outright against UCF, three games to two, but they were outscored 17 to 19. Georgia Tech, I already talked about them a little bit earlier. One of the hottest teams coming out of regional, or coming into regionals, a 4-3 loss against Kennesaw in comeback fashion, just losing that one. Eight and two to finish off their season. They've got pedigree. They are not afraid of the teams that they're gonna be going against. And Georgia Tech is a team that kind of was on the outside looking in last year as well. South Florida, a mm -hmm. team that I really didn't have a lot of belief in. But I think that this matchup is really going to have huge implications because I think these are two teams who both wanted a ton. And I know that's a cliche, but you look at these two teams and I think that when you put these two against each other, I mean, anything could happen. I don't have a clear winner in that one. And I don't think anyone can really try and predict the winner in that one right from the gate. Well, if it's anything like last year, Sean, you know, we had some surprises in the opening round of the, of the uh, regional. You know, as far as if I were to pick somebody to come out of that regional, I'd have to go with South Florida. They know what it takes to get to the nationals. And again, I hate to use the cliche of something to prove, but I think they feel like they have something to prove. They want to get to that next step as well. So that's one of the teams that I would pick out of the South region. And like you, watch out for um, Georgia Tech as well. I got a, got a little bit of an out of nowhere for my sleeper. I already picked them as the upset pick. Tampa, a team that's kind of been up and down this year, haven't had the strongest year that they've had as according to the last couple of years. They're my sleeper pick. And moving on to the national tournament this year, I'm gonna go with South Florida. I think that they have enough potential to be able to move on, but joining them down there, 
I got to go with Tampa. I think that Tampa's got a lot of potential. I think these two teams are going to find their way through. Tampa, South Florida, those are your teams that are moving on. And now we move up the coast as we go from the south up to the Atlantic. Lou, the Atlantic lost their, their big dog. They lost Bryn Athen up to the NCAA. And, well, there's not too many changes up and down the board after that. As we take a look at six and seven starting off in the regional rankings, who starts off the Atlantic rankings for us this year? Well, it's going to be Fordham against Cal U of Pennsylvania. Cal U has been to the Nationals before. This is Fordham's first really trip to the regionals. They step up and play a team like Cal U, first place in the, co in the uh, college hockey East. Uh, a very solid conference. Very intriguing matchup for Rich Gilberti and uh, Fordham's team. That's a 7-15 at Iceworks Skating Complex in Aston, Pennsylvania. Five versus eight. These are a couple familiar teams for us. You've got Rowan going up against Southern Connecticut State. Uh, Bruce Kazensky's team, you know, they felt like uh, they didn't play up to their potential last year in the regionals. And Southern Connecticut State, they made it to nationals last year. Uh, towards the end, they were very injury depleted. I think they only had like 12 skaters towards the end of the regional. Um, Bill Walsh, I talked to him on the Power Play podcast. He said they played up and down throughout the year, but now it's go time for both teams. This is going to be a very interesting matchup as well. Four versus nine has a team that you really like coming into it, and that's at the four seed. Yeah, I really like Quinnipiac. Uh, last year, unfortunately, they, they were in the top ten but couldn't uh, participate in the regionals. They play a Pitt Johnstown team that has played some solid competition. Uh, you know, Quinnipiac, they, they're third in the Empire Conference, and they're the fourth seed. That tells you what kind of strong play they have in the uh, in the Empire Conference in that Atlantic Regional. Should be a good game there. Last one in versus last one out at the 3 p.m. slot. Who are we looking at for three versus 10? Well, we've got a very high scoring team in George Mason at number three, taking on a University of Delaware team at number 10. Both these teams play in a very highly competitive Delaware Valley Collegiate Hockey Conference. George Mason, I, you know, you've got Cameron Smith, the leading goal scorer in the country this year with 72 goals. Um, they're, they're like a, a runaway freight train right now on offense. I, I really like that team. We come out and we look at teams that have been towards the top of the Atlantic the last couple of years, and a team that I really like at that number one spot, the auto bids to Nationals this year. Who is number one and who is number two here as we head to the National Tournament and they punch their ticket? Well, for the auto bids out of the Atlantic region, you've got uh, Farmingdale State at number one. Um, they've been either number one or number two or as low as four nationally, Sean, all year. Uh, Joe Mazie's team, they're back. They've been there the last two years into the national tournament. Um, very well deserved. And also another team that was there last year, Fairfield University. Uh, one and two in the Empire Conference, and they're one and two in the uh, Atlantic region, just like in the uh, North region with the Michigan Collegiate Conference. Uh, two powerhouses, well deserved. Both teams looking to make that next step to the uh, final four. It should be a dan it's a very well represented conference, well deserved. And you talk about Farmingdale, a team that finished off their season on a 15 game winning streak, a team that for a little bit at the beginning of the season and towards the middle of it as well was number one in the entire country. Mm -hmm. A lot of noise has been made at Nationals for them the last two years and well if you talk about a team from the Atlantic it's hard not to talk about that team. We look at a lot of very good matchups here in what I believe a wide open Atlantic in the regional tournament. I really like what I see in Rowan versus Southern Connecticut. Who is your one key matchup for this region? Well, you just mentioned it right there, there Rowan go. versus uh, Southern Connecticut State. Uh, Coach Bill Walsh's team, like I said, they know what it's like to get to nationals. Bruce Kaczynski's Rowan team, they want to get there. And uh, these teams are very familiar with each other. It's going to be a very close game. Uh, it's going to, you know, it's going to come down to goaltending play. And it, I really don't have, I, I don't mean to be wishy-washy, but I don't really have a pick for for that game. A slight edge maybe to uh, Rowan. It's weird to see a team like Southern Connecticut State, who was one of those pool play teams last year in the national tournament, kind of be in that sleeper position at number eight. Where do you put your sleeper pick in this regional tournament? Well, I'll tell you, if I had a sleeper pick, it would probably be Pitt Johnstown at number nine. Uh, they've played some very quality competition this year, um, and, and they've hung with the Rowans, with the uh, Fairfields, that, and I, I honestly think that against Quinnipiac, you know, that's going to come, again, right down to the end. I wouldn't be surprised if Pitt Johnstown surprises everybody and goes right to Nationals. There's a lot of teams that we like in this region. There's a lot of teams in the Atlantic that could make some noise. 
Who's moving on from the regional tournament and who's going to join Farmingdale and Fairfield? Well, to me, the first one's going to be George Mason. I, they're, they're powerhouse team. Like I said, they're very high scoring. Uh, Delaware is a good team. They both have played. They play each other in the opening round. Uh, but I, I just think George Mason's got a little too much. And my other team, um, you know, I may have to go out on a limb on this one. You know, I have to pick an upset, at least in one of my regions. I'm going to go with Cal U, Pennsylvania. They've been to Nationals, and I think they might get that last spot. We talked about the Vulcans making some noise pretty much all in our preseason show. We're going to step aside for just one moment. When we come back, it'll be time to reveal our final region in the Pacific, which I believe is a very wide open region after losing three of their top teams and pretty much every single team that competed in the playoffs last year. There's a lot of fun to come, so we'll be right back here on the Regional Reveal Show, brought to you by the ACHA. Something catch your eye? Tonight's gonna be perfect. I can feel it. Nothing could go wrong. There's my birthday, girl. Did you really expect things to work out? I just wanted one good night. Budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me treats. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Just about closing time here for the ACHA D3 Regional Reveal Show. Lou Gamlin alongside me. I'm Sean Bednard. Lou, you know what they say, go west, young man. And that's exactly where we're going to go with our Pacific rankings. A lot of good teams left. Iowa State, Marquette, Colorado State, all moving up to the next level of the ACHA. It's a new time. It's a wide open region this year. And we start off by looking at the very middle of the pack in the regional rankings, six versus seven, where we've got Colorado Mines taking on Wisconsin Platteville. Wisconsin Platteville returning to the regional scene after being a number nine seed in regionals last year. It's an interesting matchup that I think will have definitely some, some uh, potential going forward to maybe play into that regional semifinal to see who will go on. Five versus eight, though, is where I think the money's coming in from. I think this is the best matchup of the entire regionals of any regional team. Arkansas versus Kansas, a rivalry as old as time. Kansas, three and two this season, 18 goals for to 18 goals against against Arkansas. SECHC champions are Arkansas. They're a dangerous team. They came out of nowhere. They were number 15 finishing the season in the Pacific last year. Either of these teams could very easily find themselves at the national level. Number four versus number nine, Nebraska versus Northern Arizona. You and I both love Nebraska. We talked about them a ton coming into the season. They were our preseason number four. Look at that. They match up as number four now. Regionals number six in 2017. Northern Arizona, a very tough schedule, playing some of the best teams in Colorado. They've got a lot to prove. Three versus 10, the outsider versus the insider. And right there, we've got Colorado Mesa and Wisconsin Milwaukee. Milwaukee, huge jump to get from the 12 seed to the 10 seed in that last ranking, going against a Mesa team that we liked coming into the season. Number five in the preseason rankings for you and I. 2017, they were number 10 in regionals. 
what a difference a year can make as they find themselves nearly the king of that state of Colorado. We'll talk about who really runs that state when we come back here in just a second. A good matchup all across the board in regionals, but you can't talk about the Pacific without talking about the top two teams out there. They've pretty much ran the Pacific the entirety of the season. Air Force, what a season they had. I was so hot on them last year in regionals. So much love for them coming into the preseason. I've talked about it uh, ad nauseum. John Ganan, an outstanding goaltender, 17-2 and two on the season. And you get this good mix because you have that great defense in, in front of Ganan, but you have this humongous, scoring, speedy, quick offense. They don't really play that Pacific style. They're like a, a southern style of hockey with northern goaltending, and it makes it so interesting to watch. And New Mexico, you're a wrestling fan, you know about it, fantastic road warriors. They play pretty much as far west as you can play in the Pacific region, and they have looked strong playing against some of the best teams in the entire country, especially those top 10 teams in the Pacific. I think that these two teams making their way to nationals, for one, it helps them out huge, not having to take that huge travel to Nebraska, but these are really good teams that are gonna show out. That P1 versus N2 going into pool play for nationals, I mean, that's <laughs> Central Michigan versus Air Force, that's gonna be fun, but what can you tell us about these Air Force Nebraska teams? Well, you mentioned it, Sean. The Air Force team, John Ganon, solid in goal. He has been the last couple of years. Uh, they can put the puck in the net, too. They're a very complete team. Uh, Northern, or I'm sorry, New Mexico, you said it, Road Warriors. They're used to traveling, but they've played some very solid hockey all year long. You know, they've gone to Texas. They've played some solid teams there. They travel very well. And you're right, they don't have to go to Nebraska to play in the regionals. They're going to be well rested. And it, it, it's going to be very interesting to see, for me, those two teams haven't been to nationals. We're going to see how they react to it. Are they just going to be happy to be there, or are they going to be able to compete with uh, some of the powerhouses out east? Another look at those top 10 rankings for you. As I talk about the matchup that I really think is going to be an interesting one, I've already talked about it enough. Kansas versus Arkansas. Winner of this one has a clear path to nationals, I think. And that sounds kind of like a bold statement coming from a five versus an eight, but I really think these are two of the best teams. Arkansas, Georgia plays in that conference with them. Georgia finished third in the SECHC tournament after winning the regular season title outright. They're number two in the South now, and Florida come up with that number two spot in the, in the SECHC. I think there's so much for Arkansas to prove. With that Kansas and Arkansas matchup, it's hard not to think that if Kansas can win that one that they're going to be a definite sleeper. That's why I'm taking them as my sleeper. Three and two against a team that won one of the hardest conferences in the South and Pacific region against a team that's already beat the number two team in the South in Georgia playing in that SECHC uh, conference championship game. I got to go with Kansas as my sleeper. And I don't know how you're feeling about that, Lou, but... I really think this is the Rock Chalk Jayhawk year. They've kind of been on the outside looking in for regionals the last couple of years, and they've been hungry for that national spot. I think this is the year to do it. Well, I have to disagree with you on this one. I'm going with Arkansas to beat Kansas right out of the gate. My sleeper, although it's a seven seed, is going to be Wisconsin-Platteville. I think that they've got a shot, really, of going into the nationals. Uh, I just like their style of play. They're, they're very solid, very strong team physically, and I really think that they can make a make a move in this tournament. Platteville with the veteran leadership kind of this is their second regionals in a row and well somebody in that Wisconsin team they're finally getting two teams in regionals if they want to dethrone that Colorado team as the leader in the Pacific this is the year that they got to do it. My teams to move on to the national tournament from regionals I'm gonna go with Arkansas I will agree with you I, I have Kansas as my sleeper but I think Arkansas can do it and I'm gonna go with Nebraska as well you love them I love them I think this is a team that's been hungry to get to that national spotlight and that's going to do it for our regional reveals. We will have national tournament coverage coming up in a couple of weeks here. Lou and I will be back in this studio. We'll break down the inaugural ACHA D3 national tournament preview show and see who will be joining these first eight teams down in Columbus with Lou and I and a lot more of our crew. We've already got some of the pools figured out, and we will look at these as we've got Pool A. That'll have Pacific 1 in Air Force and North 2 of Central Michigan. Pool B's got North 1 of Michigan State and Pacific 2 of New Mexico. Pool C, Atlantic 1 of Farmingdale State and South 2 of Georgia. And Pool D, Florida Gulf Coast and Fairfield. We've got to figure out those other eight spots, but that's all the fun of regionals. 32 teams look to fill eight spots. And then we'll have our national preview show in a couple of weeks. We hope to see you then for the national preview show. Thank you for joining us here today for the ACHA D3 regional reveal show.